There is more than just one way to be of service to the Lord. There is more than just one way to be of service to each other. When I'm talking about being of service, I'm talking about ministering. And when we think about ministering, we think of, of preaching, but preaching, as we'll see here in our lesson this week, preaching is just one of the many gifts that God gives with no one gift being more important than the other. That is something that, that we as believers, as God's children, that is something that we must learn. That is something that we must come to understand because there are many believers today that are of the impression, they are of the thought, they are of the mindset that God has not given them a gift to use. But I tell you today that that is certainly not true. There are many gifts that God gives. And so our lesson today, it opens up there in the ninth chapter of the book of Acts. We take a look at the 36th verse where we are introduced to a disciple whose name was Tabitha, also known as Dorcas. By a disciple, we should understand that the scripture is not saying that Tabitha was one of the 12. What is being shared here with us today is that Tabitha was someone who was like us. All of us today who are of sincere faith, all of us who genuinely believe today, we are also disciples of Christ. That means that we, we follow Christ, we follow him, we follow in his way. That is what Tabitha, that is what she did. Tabitha was one of the many new followers of the way of Christ. She was one of those who made up the, the early church, the early congregation of sincere believers. And so we'll see there in that same verse there that a testimony was being shared about her. As we are told there that she was a woman who was full of good works, full of charitable deeds. And so this is something that, again, it clearly speaks about her faith. Most importantly here, it speaks about her, her service, her service in the faith there in her local church that was there in, in Joppa. Now we'll see there in the 37th verse, we'll see there that Tabitha, that she had grown sick in her story here, uh, it is about her passing away. Rather than making preparations to bury her, we're told there that her fellow saints, her fellow disciples there, they laid her in an upper room because they had heard that Peter was in a nearby city and they sent word to him, imploring him, encouraging him to quickly make a short trip over to Joppa, which Peter, when, when he had heard what had happened, we'll see there in the 39th verse, that when he arrived to the location, to that upper room where they had laid Tabitha, it tells us there that it was filled with widows who were standing by and, and they were weeping. Here's where we see one of the most beautiful testimonies of someone's works in scripture. I, I absolutely love the, the testimony uh, of Tabitha, her service and her works here. As we'll see there in the 39th verse that the widows, they show Peter the tunics and the garments that Tabitha had made for them. Those tunics, those garments, those were her good works. Those were her charitable deeds. And, and what we see there in that scripture is that even after she passed away, those garments, those tunics that she had made, they were speaking for her. They were, they were her testimony. She wasn't like Peter. She wasn't like Paul. She wasn't like John, Peter, Paul, and John who would go out and, and they would minister the word of God verbally. Paul, we know he went on, on those three missionary journeys where, where he again ministered the word of God verbally to, to many, many, many people. Tabitha, she lived there in Joppa. And I don't believe she, she was able to, to verbally minister the word of God. Many of us today aren't able to verbally minister the word of God. We aren't comfortable with, with public with public speaking, right? So we aren't comfortable with, with teaching or, or with preaching or even sharing a word. Some of us, we, we say, well, I don't know the Bible that well. I don't know scripture that well. So, I, you know, some of us, we hold back because, and I've heard this said on several occasions to me, myself, to where somebody says, well, I don't want to mess up. And so I don't, I don't say, I don't, I don't speak. And again, many believers think that, well, speaking 
ministering the word of God is something that's supposed to be done verbally. And, and they believe that because they aren't comfortable with doing that, that they have not received a gift from God. But look at Tabitha here. I don't know. Scripture doesn't tell us that that Tabitha preached. It doesn't tell us that Tabitha, that she was a singer. It doesn't tell us that. What scripture tells us is that Tabitha had this, this particular gift from the Lord that she shared with those that were around her and, and her works was speaking for her after, after she had passed away. Again, like I said in the opening, there are many gifts that, that God has that he gives to us, not one particular gift. And that's something that, that Paul, that's something that he spoke about in his writing. If you take a look at the 12th chapter in Romans and the fifth verse, We'll see in his letter to the church in Rome that Paul, he wrote that though we may all come together to form one body of Christ, we all have different functions within the body of Christ. Paul, he said there that we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. He would then go on and write to the Corinthians in his first letter in the 12th chapter and the fourth verse. He would go on to say to them, that there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. And then Paul, he begins to list some of those gifts we'll see there in the eighth verse, where for example there, he says, some have received wisdom, some have received knowledge. He then says, some are able to heal through the same spirit, while others, he said, are able to prophecy or able to distinguish between spirits. Now. While we look at those gifts there that Paul mentions there in those verses, I want you to keep in mind, these are a very limited number of gifts. In fact, you'll notice there that Paul, he doesn't even mention the gift that, that Tabitha has received. You and I, just like Paul, we can't number, we can't name the gifts. We can't name all of the gifts that God gives because God's thoughts, they are higher than our thoughts. His ways, they are higher than our ways. Again, we have to remember that the Lord will give us the desires of our heart, as, as Jesus said, as it is recorded in the 15th chapter of John's Gospel and the 8th verse, where Jesus said that the Lord, what we know he does for a fact is that he blesses us and he blesses us so that he is glorified and not we ourselves. Yes, Tabitha, the widows were there. They were holding up her works and they were saying she was a, a good child of God. But Tabitha, I want to be very clear about this. Tabitha, she glorified the Lord in her works. She made believers of those who were around her. And, and something else that I want to point out about Tabitha here is, again, who it was that she was helping. She was helping widows. And again, with that in mind, I, I, I say that I don't believe that Tabitha, that she was doing her works, that she was giving away these garments and these tunics with a price in mind. Because again, she was helping those who would have likely been unable to give her anything in return. And so I believe that Tabitha, again, I believe that she was doing a service that she loved and, and that she wasn't necessarily holding her hand out and saying, what are you going to give me? What are you going to put into my hands? Because I did this for you. And, and I think that that's something that we as believers today, that is something that we really need to keep in mind when it comes to our service. Because again, too often I hear about those who, who are ministering the Lord and they have dollar signs in mind. No, that's not what ministering is all about. Ministering is about uplifting. That is what good works is. A good work is something that uplifts. And Tabitha, that's what her works did. They certainly did uplift. Now, when we get back over to the ninth chapter of Acts and we take a look there at the 40th verse, Peter, I imagine that he did not in appreciation for the widows holding up the tunic, the tunics and, and the garments there. But we'll see that Peter, again, they came to him for a, a reason. 
and we'll see there that Peter, he puts the widows out of the room. I imagine that again, he did that in a kind manner. I don't believe that he came in upset and furious and just pushed them out of the room. I don't believe that that was the case. We'll see that he put the, the widows out of the room, that he knelt down to Tabitha. We'll see there that Peter, that he prayed, and then he called on Tabitha to arise. And we'll see there in scripture that she opened up her eyes, she saw Peter, and she sat up. For me, this puts me in in remembrance of of Jairus and, and his daughter who had who had uh, lost her life and how Jesus how he entered into to his uh, Jairus' house and he had to to put some people out of the house as well and he restored the life of of Jairus's daughter. It can also put you in mind of the raising of Lazarus or the restoring of of Lazarus's life, how Lazarus had got sick and, and how Jesus said, well, Lazarus's sickness is not unto death, but to glorify the Lord. And so again, Tabitha here, you could kind of think of her growing sick and, and her passing away as again, being something to glorify the Lord. We'll see there that after her life was restored, that Peter, he lifted her up, that he showed her to, to her friends, the, the saints that was there in Joppa. And again, we're told there in the 42nd verse that, that after her life was restored, that the message that it spread throughout all of Joppa and many people were told there that they believed in the Lord that day. And so while her life being restored may be the, the big point for, for many people to, to speak on, uh, it may have been something that, that everybody in Joppa in that day was talking about how, how Peter restored Tabitha's life. I believe that the service, her works, I believe that that is what we should really be focusing in on. Because again, all of us, we, we live in this world and we should be living to uplift each other, but are we doing that? And I think that that's something that we as believers, we have to especially ask ourselves because again, we have a task that has been assigned to us by, by Christ himself, who said that we should go out among all people and that we should baptize, that we should minister him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And again, many times when we think about that, we think about about this, what we do with our lips, what we do with our tongue, what we do with our mouth in, in ministering verbally. But again, something that I want everyone to understand is that not everybody has been called to be a preacher. Not everybody has been called to be an evangelist. Not everybody has been called to be a, a singer or a, a deacon. Not all of us have been called to do this, do that. We, we all have our own gift that we have received from the Lord. And the thing about that is that every gift that God gives, they are unique and they are perfect and they work. But all of us, we have to come to accept that not all of us have been called to do this one task. And even if you have been called to preach or, or to sing in the choir, right? Even if you have been called to do that, you're not going to do it the same way as somebody else does. That is something else that we must come to, to understand and to accept. I don't preach in the same manner that somebody else preach. I can admire how somebody else preach, but that doesn't mean that that is how I am going to preach. I don't preach the same way as my dad did. We, we preach very differently. And I remember my dad saying to me, you're going to be a better pastor. You're going to be a better preacher than, than I am. He said that to me a long time ago before, before I ever began to preach. And, and it puzzled me that he said that because in my mind, nobody could be better than him. But again, I am very grateful. I'm very thankful for the gift that I have received from the Lord and that, that I'm ministering it the best way that I possibly can. That is what is most important for us to again, receive the gift that we have received from the Lord. If you don't know what your gift is, pray on it. The Lord will reveal it to you. And then when it is revealed to you, go about ministering it to the best of your ability. That is something that scripture tells us repeatedly over and over and over again, minister to the best of our ability. We should be trying to bear good fruit, good fruit. It will outlast us. It will outlive us. 
just as we saw here with Tabitha. Our works, they will speak for us today. And if they are good works, they will speak for us tomorrow as well. That is what is key. That is what is important. All of us, we have a gift to minister, to share to every generation, to where those who are younger than us and in the generations behind us, that they can carry on in, in our works. So again, I hope that this lesson today, I hope that it will inspire you to, to take up your gift and to use and to minister your gift, to be of service to the Lord and to be of service to all of those that are around you. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Be sure that you like this video and if you aren't doing so already, make sure that you're following this channel. Hit the alert bell as well so that you don't miss any notifications for the next video that we share here on the Newfound Faith YouTube channel.